all season long, the 76ers with Joel Embiid have been a considerably better team than the Heat. But we've seen this story enough times to know how it goes. When the stakes get high, Eric Spolstra activates his mad wizardry, and all of a sudden they're a nightmarish matchup for everyone who stands in their way. Only, this isn't the same Philadelphia as long as Nick Nurse is at the helm, and that led to quite the battle. You could tell right away that this was going to be a messy one. The Sixers' first possession came down to the end of the shot clock before Tobias Harris hit an awkward jumper, and it was the exact same thing for the Heat. An end-of-clock three-pointer from Bam that doesn't drop. Next time down for the Sixers, Joel's going to initiate from up top and attack one-on-one, -on -one, and Bam does an incredible job of sliding in front of his drive, absorbing contact to hold his ground, before smothering a step-back J. Pretty much everything felt clogged up, and whenever one of the teams did get a decent look, like a corner three for Harris, shots weren't falling. And Philly had a decent amount of possessions that resulted in a shot that they won. This time Maxi runs pick and roll, is met with drop coverage, and steps back for a three. That's a high quality shot. This applies to the Heat as well. When Jimmy Butler attacks a closeout, he basically walks into a warm-up midi. No bucket though. The big difference for Miami is that while both teams missed shots, they also really struggled taking care of the ball early on, with turnover after turnover, and it got to a point where after 4 minutes of play, the score was still 4-2. That's when Joel really started to get aggressive. It started with an open side post up, and he up fakes Bam off the floor to draw a couple of free throws. A possession later, it's an early offense where the Heat fail to track him as a trailer, and once he's got a lane to attack like that, there really isn't much you can do. Next time down, it's back to that open side isolation, except now facing up, and he forces contact before drawing a foul call that really could have been let go. Either way, that's number two on Bam, so he's got to take a break. In the first possession against a defense without Bam, Philly again attacks an open side, but with a couple of ball screens, and a miscommunication from the Heat results in an open corner three for Kyle Lowry that puts them up by eight. About a minute later is when Miami finally went to their first possession of zone defense. With Joel operating near the elbow, he draws two to the ball and patiently waits for an opportunity to present itself like Tyrese Maxey on the perimeter just one pass away. Next time down, they're back in the same zone, but with Joel starting up top, and it's a lot harder to read the defense when you have to turn your back to it. He wants to get to the middle, and in doing so gets blindsided by Jimmy Butler, who picks up one of his five steals on his way to room service on the other end. When Joel checked out, Miami stayed in that zone. Philly's unable to get the ball to Paul Reed in the middle, so they instead try swinging it to the wing for Oubre to flash middle, which also gets denied, and now nearing the end of the shot clock, Maxi has to force the issue, resulting in a turnover. That quickly prompted Nurse to get Joel back on the floor to have someone controlling the middle, but again, it was tough to get the ball there because of how aggressively those wing defenders played the entry. Eventually, Maxi tries to force feed him, and it's another turnover. So next time, instead of trying to get him the ball in the middle, they start with Joel up top, freeing up the lane for a drive from the wing, only for Buddy Heald to throw an off-target pass for turnover number 7 of the quarter. It didn't matter how they set up, priority number one for Miami was to not let Embiid touch the ball inside the arc. Heald is trying to get it to him, but Love is fighting for his life, and that ends up in a game of hot potato between him and Batum, then ultimately a missed three. During these few minutes, they were only able to score on the zone once, and it came on one of those late shot clock drives from Maxi. It didn't help that this is precisely when the Heat started to find some offensive success of their own. You've got a tough floater from Tyler Hero, you've got an attack on Joel Embiid's drop coverage with a Jaime Jaquez pick and pop for their only made three of the quarter, and by the time we arrive at the first buzzer, it's a 23-22 Miami lead. To start the second, they stayed in that 2-3 zone, and like clockwork, that means not letting Joel touch the ball. Batum tries to force feed him on the block, which I think you know the result of. Then the Sixers try something a little bit different. Instead of first going to Joel, Batum flashes to the middle himself to serve as that connector, only that gets him the ball in an impossible spot, and you guessed it, turnover. 
When the Heat instead went to man coverage, you can see how drastic of a difference it makes. Joel appears to be setting up a dribble handoff, only to fake it on a drive that Love never had a chance of stopping. That doesn't mean it was easy though, thanks to Miami's unique helping principles. Maxi is cross-matched with Love, an automatic blow-by, but what I want you to focus on is DeLon Wright. He makes a great rotation from the weak side corner to protect the rim before deflecting a pass down low. After that, it was right back to the zone, and once again Philly tries a different counter. Joel's gonna start on the right block, while three shooters all stack on the left side of the floor, meaning that if the ball finds the corner, it's a one-on-one -on -one between Joel and a smaller defender. They clearly found something here, although he's unable to convert this time around. Still, the struggle was taking care of the ball, and even in the rare event that they were able to find a quality look, they remained cold, shooting 3 of 18 from 3 in the first half. It was around this time that we also got the viral meme possession from Tobias Harris, following a miss unsuccessfully, grabbing a third chance, using a power dribble to create a wide open layup, miss, then on chance number 4, well, that was the story of this second quarter for the Sixers. Unfortunately, they couldn't survive this level of offense much longer because here came an onslaught from the Heat offense. With Joel on the floor, they could exploit his tendency to drop back to the paint through the outside shooting of Kevin Love. Then when Joel wasn't out there, they could exploit the team's lack of paint protection with a pick and roll lob from Hero to Bam. Of course, it goes without saying that during this time, they were also turning defense into offense, which is only natural when your team has 9 steals in the first 24 minutes. And then in the half court, Philly actually tried a zone of their own. Except, without aggressive ball denial, it's easy for Hawkes to catch in the middle, and with a quick extra pass, DeLon Wright's got an open corner 3. On the other end, Miami continued to play their zone even with no Joel, and the Sixers just struggled to do much of anything. It was during this stretch though, that they appeared to really solve one of their biggest problems. Instead of trying to get the ball to a big in the middle, what if they cleared a side of the floor for an easy catch near the corner and attacked the defense from there? More on that later, but you can see a glimpse of what I mean on this one. Joel almost serves as a decoy on that elbow to make the defense gravitate towards him, leaving them with a numbers advantage on the opposite side, and it's a great look from Batum. Quickly swinging the ball like that proved to be effective in forcing Miami's defense to shift. This time it leaves Maxi with a closeout to attack, another important point to keep in the back of your mind even though he doesn't score. With that said, the miss led to a run out for the Heat, and ultimately a transition 3 for Hero, which is basically exactly what happened again just a few seconds later. In transition, Jimmy drives, collapses the entire defense, and nobody even thought to track Caleb Martin as he puts them up by a game-high 14 points. In the closing seconds, it's some man defense, so Joel can get back to his bread and butter with an inside the arc isolation, where he draws a foul on the entry pass. That takes us to the end of the half, a 51-39 heat lead after making the Sixers look completely clueless on a solid 80% of their possessions. During that break, I can only imagine Nick Nurse absolutely cooking in the locker room because the same clueless team that played the first 24 minutes was not the same team that came out of the tunnel, ready to counter everything Spolstra and the Heat threw their way. Miami opened with man coverage, and the Sixers attacked that with the basic offensive principles that have worked for them all season long. The main thing was exploiting an open side of the floor like I alluded to earlier. With nobody in position to properly help, Joel can take Bam one-on-one, -on -one, where he's just too physically overwhelming around the basket. Typically though, it's going to be an open side dribble handoff. Maxi's able to turn the corner and attack the middle, where he steps back for a soft touch jumper from about the free throw line. These actions can be run with anyone. This time it's Nick Batum who he hands it off to, and while that's happening, you simultaneously have Buddy Heald relocating up top, and when he draws a closeout, it's then Batum who relocates, and all of that movement just breaks down the defense and gets you the open three you want. This newfound success was only amplified by their defense. Embiid was completely controlling the paint, and the Heat were relying heavily on Tyler Hero to create pretty much everything, while he was struggling to hit pretty much anything. He was 0 of 5 shooting in the third, and really over the entire game just 9 of 27, so lots of empty possessions. 
He also struggled with turnovers, five of them, and this one resulted in a beautiful outlet pass from Embiid to a streaking Lowry, who tries his hardest to foul bait with the teammate there to follow his miss. Turning defense into offense was another way they could counter some of their early struggles, because without time to properly set up, there's no real way to ensure that Philly doesn't gain an advantage. Like here in semi-transition, Joel catches the ball on the wing with Hero standing in his way. So when he drives, he of course collapses the D before kicking it to Heald who's got all the time in the world. The biggest key in all of this though was the constant rim pressure. Maxi sets up in the high pick and roll, and as soon as he sees a glimpse of room he's turning on the Jets, where he knows that the aggressive help will make those kickout passes available. Against zone defense, it's all about finding ways to take advantage of the gaps, and when you have a slasher like Maxi, that becomes a lot easier because he can do it seemingly by himself. Starting from an open side, he attacks the middle, kicks it out to Heald who does the exact same thing, and they really started to break the zone wide open. The ability to make quick decisions like this is imperative. When Heald catches the ball, he has to decide right away what he's doing. He threatens a drive and moves it to Batum, who instantly gets off a three. Remember earlier, I talked about how well stacking the weak side corner worked, here they go back to it, and that creates a gap in the defense for Maxi to attack, before kicking it to Payne in the corner for their fifth three-pointer of the quarter. For the most part, the Heat struggled to match this production, but did close out the third strong. Kevin Love hit a three with about 30 seconds to go, and then on the last possession, it was Jaquez who gave them a 5-point lead with just 12 minutes left in the game. Miami of course opened the 4th with the zone, and from the Sixers you're gonna see a combination of what I've talked about. Exploiting the open side, making quick decisions off the catch to shift the defense, and it ends up in the hands of Joel for a top of the key triple. Here it is again a couple minutes later. This time he catches it in the middle, and as soon as Hero starts to load up from the opposite wing, he makes a beautiful pass to Batum for yet another outside jumper that gives them their first lead since the opening quarter. We just have to give props to Nick Batum, who played by far his best game of the season. 6 of 10 from 3 for 20 points, including clutch bucket after clutch bucket. And really, most of the role guys did their jobs. On this one, it's Heald who attacks a closeout to drive the gap, before lobbing it up for Paul Reed. The Heat weren't going down easy though. Jimmy Butler continued to be an absolute nuisance in passing lanes, forcing a turnover for some free points on the other end, and this portion of the game was extremely back and forth. Maxi continues to put relentless pressure on the rim through his explosive driving, and believe it or not, Tyler Hero also showed up with a big time three. That sparked a short Miami run that included this drive and dunk from Jaquez to steal the lead back, and then a possession later, it's Hero who gets into the defense, but instead for a floater. Trailing by three, Tobias Harris goes for the tie with a jumper from the wing, and it's a horrendous miss. Actually, Nurse pulled Harris for the rest of the game, a tough decision that former coaches probably wouldn't have made. That change didn't exactly stop Hero from cooking though. He had 16 huge fourth quarter points after the awful start, and down the stretch, it sort of started to feel like a battle of who could create more offense between him and Embiid. This time in semi-transition, Maxi leaves it for a trailing Joel as he knocks down another long-range jumper, then Hero comes right back with a high ball screen, where he counters Joel's drop with a pull-up three. Now with less than two minutes to go, Miami strings together an awesome defensive possession, but they're unable to keep the big fella off the glass as he puts it back up for two plus a foul. Now it's Hero's turn, again starting with the high pick and roll and going right at Embiid before finding Haywood Highsmith for an off the catch drive, and ultimately a floater that ties it up at 96. To say every possession matters from this point would be an understatement. With Miami in their zone, Joel once again attacks from up top, and he does absolutely everything right from driving the gap to creating a finish, yet he's unable to convert not once, but twice, leaving the Heat with a big opportunity. That chance would be promptly wasted though, as Hero steps back court for a turnover, and just like that the odds are back in Philly's favor. Just like last time, it starts with Joel up top, but not for a drive, rather a beautiful pass to the flashing Ubre, which results in a potential three-point play. Back on defense, one stop can essentially seal the game, and when Hero tries a pull-up three, 
who else but Nick Batum on the block? On that note, I want you to listen to what Batum said about that play after the fact. I mean, they show me that play like coaches show me that play in the video literally like a minute before. So we're expecting that play like for them to go around and catch it from go right and shoot it like right away. That's exactly the play they showed me like a minute before. So I was expecting it. We're talking about a complete coaching masterclass from Nick Nurse and his staff to swing this game in their favor. You had some back and forth theatrics with quick twos and take fouls, but it was over and Philly makes it out of the play in with the seventh seed. You can point to any number of storylines in this game, like the play of Batum, Butler and Hero struggling to score, how Joel and Maxi attacked the zone, but I think it all comes back to coaching. Spolstra's masterful principles when it comes to executing zone and timing up help made things incredibly difficult for the Sixers, and they adjusted, countered, ultimately gaining the upper hand in a basketball chess match. If you enjoyed this breakdown, make sure to drop a like, subscribe, and turn my post notifications on to be first on more content. If you're interested in my more in-depth research, make sure to check out my website and social media profiles. You can find those links in the description. Feel free to let me know down in the comments what you thought of this game. As always, I hope you all have a great day, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.